the HZSR04 ultrasonic ranging sensor module on the Raspberry Pi and Arduino. All the parts, all the code, come on in. Welcome to Maker's Digest. On this episode, we're gonna get the HCSR04 ultrasonic distance sensor running on the Raspberry Pi and the Arduino. Technically, it's called a ranging module, but I've seen it called a distance sensor a bunch, and well, that's what it does, so. When connected to a microcontroller, it measures the distance to an object by sending a ping out and then measuring the time it takes to reflect back from the object to the sensor. It's effective from approximately two centimeters to four meters with a ranging accuracy of about three millimeters. The transmitter, receiver, and control circuit are all built into this module, so it's pretty easy to get it up and running on your microcontroller. These are super cheap. From Amazon, you can get a five pack for about eight bucks, which puts it around $1.50 a module. It's powered by five volts and uses a five volt signal. That will work fine on an Arduino as the GPIO pins are all five volts, but on the Pi, we have to step that down to 3.3 volts since the Pi GPIO is 3.3. Not a problem though, we'll fix that. We focus on implementation here, so we're gonna get right to it. This tutorial will show you how to connect the HCSR04 to an Arduino and a Raspberry Pi, as well as provide some examples and the code, but I don't cover everything it can do. We're gonna cover just enough so you can get it working and experiment with it and get it into your project fast. So let's jump over to the workbench and get started. Here we go with the Arduino. It's a pretty simple setup for the Arduino. There's no external components to connect other than what you see here. What we're gonna to need to connect this is the module itself and four male to male jumper wires. We're gonna put the module kind of close to the front here. It's different than the schematic, but this way we have a plane right at the front so we can measure it. We'll uh, throw a tape measure up there once we get it running with the code and you can see the output. This is a five volt device and we're gonna pull five volts off of the Arduino. It's at ground first. ground into ground, which is the rightmost pin on the module. Take five volts to the leftmost pin. The trigger pin connects to pin 11 on the Arduino. And the echo pin I'm off by one row here. Goes to pin 12. Let me fix these. I was just shifted over one row, so I just moved them back to the right spot. And that's it for the connection. We've got power, we've got ground, got echo, and our trigger and echo plugged into pin 11 and 12 just like you see on the schematic. So let's take a look at the code and see how this works. There are no libraries to import for this code. It's pretty simple. My phone's dying. Uh, we set up trigger pin and the echo pin on 11 and 12. We set up some variables here. And the way that this works is it sends out kind of a ping, reflects off a service surface and then receives it. So you can think about the trigger as the send, that's what's gonna send the output, and then the echo pin is going to receive the input from the reflection. Down here in the loop, this is where we perform that function. We send out uh, the ping and then receive it but before we do that, we wanna know for sure that it is in the low state. So we're gonna set the trigger to low, throw a little delay in for five milliseconds, and this does nothing other than tell us that we are definitely in a low state. To trigger the ping, we set the trigger pin to high, 
wait for 10 microseconds, and then set it to low. That's the 10 microsecond ping that it sends out. Arduino has a function called pulse in, which will record the time on the echo pin from when it's in a different state until it goes to high. So we know it's in low. And from this moment until this moment, we want to know how long it takes to get back. And that's what pulse in can do. And that's a round trip. So it sends it out, reflects off a surface, and then receives it. So we need to divide that duration by two for a one-way trip. A little bit on speed of sound. The speed of sound is 343 meters per second at sea level. It all depends on uh, humidity and temperature and altitude and all of that stuff. If you want to figure out exactly what your speed of sound is for your altitude and your temperature and all of that if you need to have really, really, really precise measurements, which this can't really do that well. Uh, go ahead and figure that out. There's tons of calculators on the internet. Of, you can put in your altitude and all of that and it'll tell you how many meters per second speed of sound is for you specifically. We need to convert that to centimeters per second, and you'll have to trust my math on that, 0 0.0343. Same with inches. Inches per second at sea level is 13,503.9. We're going to convert that to microseconds as well, so 0 0.0135. Here's where we divide it, the duration by 2 times this number that we come up with, and then we display it. So let's run it and see how it works. And here it comes. This is reflecting off of me right now. Let's uh, put a phone in there and see, and a tape measure, let's do that. This tape measure, which is a fun little tape measure from IKEA, is imperial and metric. So let's try 10 centimeters right around. There are 10 centimeters, which is about four inches. Let's try four centimeters. Go all the way out to seven inches. And that's it, it's working. Very easy setup. Let's move on to the Raspberry Pi. And the Raspberry Pi. This is a little bit different setup because this is a five volt unit. The input is five volts and the output on the, the echo pin is also five volts. If you remember, Raspberry Pi, all of the GPIO pins are 3.3 volts. So we have to knock that down a little bit so that this is reading 3.3 volts. What we need to set this up is the module itself. We have See, four male to female jumpers and one male to male jumper. Let's get started. We're going to plug this in same way we did with the Arduino, kind of up close. So we have a plane to measure off of. Take our power. So we want five volts. That's on pin two here. Five volts. We're gonna take our ground, which is pin six. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is gonna to go to the rail. I'll show you why here in a minute. Our trigger pin can go directly from the module to the Raspberry Pi, and that's gonna go on pin seven. Take our 
trigger. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now for the echo pin, we have to step down that voltage. These two resistors, we've got a 1K resistor and a 2.2K resistor. Uh, if you have a 2K resistor, use that. I didn't have one, so this is what I'm using, 2.2. We're going to jump off of this pin kind of across here. And we're going to take the 2.2K resistor off that same rail into ground. That's why we went from ground to the rail rather than directly into here. Then we take uh, let's see this for the echo in between the two resistors to pin 11. The 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. We do need to jump this off of ground to ground. That's where that is. So we got power directly into the Raspberry Pi on pin two. We've got trigger going to pin seven on the Arduino. Our echo pin between these two resistors to pin 11 and then ground from the unit into the rail onto pin six on the Raspberry Pi. So let's take a look at the code and see if it works. Tried to set this up very similar to the Arduino code so you can kind of bounce back and forth and, and see what's going on. We need the Raspberry Pi GPIO library module we need the time module and sys imported. We have our trigger pin on pin 7 and our echo pin on pin 11. And those are referenced as board numbering, and we set that with set mode gpio.board. Uh, pin 7 is also known as gpio4, and 11 is whatever it is. I can't remember right off the top of my head, but... I am going to try to standardize on using board number references. So when I say pin two, we're talking about pin two, you see it in the code. I have a loop set up here to kind of simulate what's happening on the Arduino. And we do the same thing. We have uh, to set our trigger output to low so we know it's low. I let this one sleep for two seconds here because that is that kind of does a wait for the whole loop. So that's where the, the wait happens. And here's the trigger. GPIO.output trigger pin to high, wait for 10 microseconds, and then set it to low. We don't have the pulse in similar style function here, so we do this a little bit differently where right after this happens, while the input pin, input on echo pin is zero or low, because it's low here, we record the time. As soon as it goes high, while gpio.input echo pin equals one or high, because that's when it receives it back, we stop the pulse, or we record the time at the end of the pulse. And then down here, we get the duration by subtracting pulse start from end, and that's how long it took. The math is a little bit different because of the way that the timing works. We still have to divide it in half for the round trip to get one way. And you can see these numbers are the same, except for the way that they need to be calculated. And then we display it to the user. Let's run it, see how it goes. And here it comes. Let's 
set up our measurement. Right now it's reflecting off me and that's about how far away I am sitting from this module. Let's use my media phone here again. There's three inches. Right around close to eight centimeters. Go into one inch. Try 13 centimeters. It's a little bit close. And you're seeing we're getting more precision here. That's because Python is easier to print a float. I didn't take the time to deal with that on the Arduino, but if you want to set that up and you can see the higher precision, have at it. So that's it. A few more components on the Raspberry Pi, but it's still really easy. It uh, Just a few pins and the whole thing is set up, ready to rock. Well, there you have it, the HCSR04 on the Raspberry Pi and the Arduino. Don't forget, all the code we used in this episode is on GitHub and linked in the description below. There's also a link to where you can buy all the parts for this tutorial if you want to try it out for yourself. And now that you have everything you need, go be creative and share with me what you make. I can be found on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Patreon, and all those. If you liked this video, please consider subscribing and ringing that bell so you'll get notified when a new episode is available. Thanks for watching, and until next time, keep making.